My fault, son. I don't know why. Yeah, but, yeah we, but, we went out. So, yeah, I just went from zero to hero, bro. And then, like, on, oh, crack it. Playing, playing, playing. You know, we lost to Siena. We should have won, man. We lost to Siena to go to the Sweet 16 that year. And it was just ended up being a good year. So then going into my senior year, I'm thinking it's on. So we went on an international trip, right? Okay, now Evan has – he was playing 3-4. Now he's moved to the one. So I'm like, remember. dang. Yeah. So I'm like, all right, cool. I'm coming off the bench, but I'm still – he was first leading scorer. I was second on this international trip. So then we get to the season. And I don't really play, bro. It was just like nothing. I was this man. I can remember back. I can remember. Yeah, back remember I would talk to you. And, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I'm thinking like, this is crazy because the reason why y'all didn't make a deep run that year is because he didn't play the bench. And Evan, he probably played. He ran Evan's legs in the ground. Thirty. Bro. He averaged thirty. I Listen, remember. our starters: thirty-eight, thirty-eight, thirty-seven point five, thirty-six. They played the whole game. We only played five people. Yeah, ran them in the ground. And then he, he like after that, he kind of had like that was his mo. Like he started getting known for that. Like he would ride, even like with D'Angelo. He just started. That was his thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I remember. Yep. Like, he, like he said we had a conversation. Yeah. Like, man, that's crazy. But you always, I can say this, man, you always kept your head up. You always kept working. You stayed who you were. And yeah. that's commendable, man. That's, that's the man in you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know, because, you know, I just, I don't know, man. God has always, it's always been the, the road less travel for me. Like, the, the, the stairs, when I see everybody yeah. else taking the elevator, it's like straight stairs. And then, you know, look, I graduate. Yeah. I graduated early during the season. After I was so salty, I wasn't playing. I ain't even going to graduation. I was the only person graduating that year. I said, "Man, just send me my diploma, man. It's all good." <laughs> <laughs> like, send my what diploma to my mom son. and dad. Like, fam, I'm about to go home and work out. Fam, I left everything. I, you know, I had like a crazy town home, fully furnished everything. I left all of that, bro. I ain't care. I just hopped in my car, took my clothes, and dipped. Like, and then I got home. I got home. Just was working out every day, trying to figure it out. Now, meanwhile, you know, I ain't even tell you, like, that I, I found out about my daughter. You know what I'm saying? Like, I got a Facebook message. Mm -hmm. We go, let's, let's, yep. let's make that its own section. Let's make that its own <laughs> All right, it's good. Cool. Yeah. So let, me, let, me, let me touch back on college, and then we'll transition over to that. Yeah, go ahead. Um, go ahead. Let's, uh, your sister. So how was it? I know you had to be super proud, and I remember seeing you one time. I came to... Uh, one of the girls' games, and you was there, right there, supportive and just super, super, you know, supportive and proud. Give me some, you know, how was that for you, man, to see your sister? And and honestly, like, how was that seeing your sister flourish? Not that it's like jealousy or anything, but like that's for sure you had, and then she was murdering. She was going crazy, and you know, my sister was headed to UConn or Duke. I convinced her to go to Ohio State. Mm -hmm. She wasn't going there, and what mm -hmm. I sold her on is like opportunity for us brother and sister to play at the same school but my sister mm -hmm. is the exact opposite of me she got the gift she got the it factor she don't really work yep. hard so that yep. like uh that it factor oh my sister taylor hill taylor hill she the NBA. Yeah. WNBA. so she's just always had that it factor she was usa first team uh today like top five gatorade player of the year all that mcdonald's all american so I convinced her that, like, you need to work hard, but you need somebody to show you the ropes. So you come right. to Ohio State, you're going to win Big Ten championships because she won four of them. Um, right. But I'm going to teach you how to work hard because every level is, like, better and better people. You think about the people at Division One; It's the best kid on each college team. I mean, each high school team. High school. One or two kids. Yeah. Yeah. And then you get to the WNBA, it's not the best player of, like, the top 20 colleges only. Yep. Like, it's a whole nother ball game. So mm -hmm. I wanted to teach her how to really work hard. And uh, that's what I did, man. She learned that work at the end. And she went stupid. <laughs> she <laughs> went stupid. Let me, so let me ask you this about her. Like, So Lighty, Lighty's one of your best friends. Boom. They end up being together. How, how did you feel about that? You know what? I was cool. Let me tell you how weird. So, you know, Light, my guy. So I'm going to keep it all the way 100. We was roommates. 
So, you know, we active. We active. And I'm mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. you know, he don't want to be active no more. He's slowing down. Like, uh -huh. I'm still pedal to the metal, uh -huh. you know what I'm saying, to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> so I see him slowing down. I'm like, man, something, something weird, right? So then mm -hmm. one day they both came to me like on some, yeah, we like each other, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, cool. Do y'all thing. You know what I'm saying? Do y'all thing. Mm -hmm. I trust y'all, you know, y'all young adults. Do y'all thing. That's 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 honorable. He came to you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, right real way, dude. You know I mean? yeah. yeah. That's definitely honorable. So, all right, cool. So, all right, now, college out the way. You go home, you try to figure it out. Did you, I remember you telling me the story about your daughter. As a matter of fact, man, always love to the end of the oh, world. Oh, man. Bro. Your story helped me, man, you know, but. Oh, um, oh everything. Yeah, you, yeah, you did what I said, yeah. man. I'm well, proud I'm of you so, for that. Yeah. Uh, did you did you know you had the baby before your daughter before you went pro or it was after? No, nah, it was like uh, you know I got her so this was like maybe March of my senior year. <laughs> I got that message on Facebook. Sorry, I ain't never told you you got a two year old daughter. I was shook, bro. You know I mean I slammed that computer, <laughs> unplugged that mug. <laughs> 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 you know what I'm saying? I slammed that more. I plugged it. Man, I plugged that thing back in, opened it back up, logged back in. That message was still there. I was like, damn, I was shook. Still there. Yeah, I was so shook that I ain't tell nobody for like months. I was just trying to think of like, what can I do? You know what I'm saying? So I hit her back that I'll be talking, but I didn't tell nobody, fam. I ain't know what to say. Like, I was really shook. So then after the season, when I came home, like it was time to go, you know, like go see her, take the paternity test and all of that. So when I went down there, she was living in Texas. And, you know, her mom played college basketball. She just got involved with the wrong people, got turned out. But I went down there, and, and when I got her, I remember the first thing my daughter going to say to me, she's going to talk about something. Dad, where you been? I'm like, fam, <laughs> where you been? Like... <laughs> Where you been at, fam? Like, <laughs> where you been? Yeah, no, where you been? Like, so, uh, yeah, man. So I got, you know, we we um we went to court and all that, and then I brought my daughter back home with me, bro. That was ten years ago. You know the story. My yep. daughter ain't seen her mom since. Yeah, that's beautiful. I know. And you I know, told so me that. Figure it out. A little quick, little. Side note, like you, you told me that, and that just like put. I already had to fight in me, but I'm like, man, as soon as I get home, I'm boom, 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 and then so yeah, go you everything, go to the move. Because yeah. I told you I had to represent myself. So like for six months when I was playing in Latvia, I studied that law, studied yeah. all them laws, bro. And it was yeah, like, I got, I got to figure it out. I got straight to it. And shout out to my man, Columbus Father and Stefan Dunn. If you watched this, shout out to him because he helped me a whole bunch. So oh, I, he's the man, man. Dunn. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's, that's, yeah. That's what he do, bro. That's what he do. He helped. Oh, like, for real. Man, that's what he do. So He's mad good people. Good. He one of my coolest, like, outside of you, he cool people. Cool, bro. Good, yeah. Good, 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 good. So, I right, do my man, Ball Up, want to know where you, where you went pro at. So, tell him, uh, tell him all the countries you played in and then. We kind of build up, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, so I played in Latvia, Greece, Finland, Russia, um, Lithuania, Hungary, China. That's it. Those eight. Oh, did I miss one? Yeah, that's it. Those eight. Yeah. Traveling around yeah. a lot. But so, it, was, it was good. Good, great career. So out of all those, out of all those, give us some... Um... <laughs> Give us some, give us some of your experience, good, bad, and different, like out of all those countries, and and you played so the, the minors too, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I played in the PBL, so that was like real. That yeah, was man, that was a grind. Yeah, <laughs> I went stupid For in that sure. league, though. <laughs> I heard. Yeah, so uh, I was supposed to play with y'all. That's another story. Yeah, what? We needed some. We just needed one more. We had Nate Mouse. Yeah. He was raw, fam. He was like the best to never do something like. It was crazy. But, uh, nah, man, I had some crazy experiences. I experienced when we was in China together, and mm -hmm. we seen the people cooking them dogs. Man, bro. Woo. I ain't <laughs> Man, people be like, oh. Listen, you know, I was over there last year. I seen some more stuff. I'm like, man, they don't Man, they was putting them dogs in a the fryer. Like, bro, they don't care, bro. 
I could not believe that, fam. Yeah, that was crazy. Another crazy story I had when I went to Latvia, I played on a small in a small town that was like on the border of the Russia and Russia and Latvia. Man, none of these people, nobody spoke English. Not even one of my coaches spoke English. Hardly any of my teammates nobody. spoke English. N bro, nobody. It was crazy. And it was, the people who did, it was like very broken English. Yeah. But that town, they showed me so much love, fam. I was every every famous black person you can be like, people would be like, Tupac. <laughs> They'd be like, oh, mama. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I was every, you know me, like, what up? Black Whatever famous black words, I'd be in the club like Jay Z. <laughs> <laughs> <It's crazy. laughs> oh, every day. I was just any famous black person. So, like, you know, as a man, as a black man, I real felt honored, you know, to be able to represent us like that, you know, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. though I was the person that they got to see, like, oh, this is what black people is like. Mm -hmm. Oh, they cool, because I was mm -hmm. cool with everybody, like, took time, mm -hmm. showed love. I mean, let me tell you something. I had the craziest experience ever. This was my crazy experience. So when I was living in Latvia, I lived on the first floor of this place. They would knock on my door all the time. People would knock on my door. Like kids begging for money and all of that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I would get like oh, nah. sick of it at times, right? You said kids so I remember one, what else? Kids begging for money and people just coming to my door for all kind of random stuff. So one time somebody was banging on my door, man. I like hopped out the window, went around, had a knife, like, man, you wanted my door. It was like, no, 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 we we just call ask can you move your car? Like car move over. But then one time it was like it was like, bro, it was like 8, 8, 7 a.m. Somebody banging on my door. Stupid. Man, I let it just go for a minute. They was banging too crazy. So I came to the door, fam. Dude, like, I opened the door, and my neighbor right across the hall from me was hanging, hanging from the thing. And his friend had found him, and he was, like, banging, like, call like, call the police. Somebody, like, try, try to murder yeah. him or he try to murder himself. So, fam, you know, I'm from the USA. I got my phone. Yeah. And I'm dialing 911. <laughs> 911. It don't work overseas. Right. right. Yeah, so I'm, like, dialing 911, like, man, something wrong with this phone. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy. Dude, and dude don't even speak English. He's speaking Russian, bro. Yeah. So immediately I just dropped the phone. I like pick dude up, pick my neighbor up because he's hanging. Pick him up. Go grab an, uh First I go grab a knife, pick my neighbor up and tell him like the, his friend cut him down. And we cut him down. We cut him down. Yeah. He like got blood all coming from his mouth. His, the, his friend started doing mouth to mouth with him, fam. He died. He was like already like almost dead, but he died, so we couldn't bring him back. Damn. We stood there with that body for over an hour and a half. The police didn't even come for an hour and a half. We just sat there with the body. It what? was so weird, fam. First I was like praying like crazy. So dude was looking at me like he talking to weird, like Yeah, yeah. Then yeah. I just was like, after like 30 minutes of praying, it's nothing else to say, bro. We just there chilling. Dead body right there, dude. Dead. We just like it was so weird. That oh, is the crazy. weirdest thing. Yeah, yeah. Him, and it was a murder. It was a murder. What? Somebody hung him, bro. Yes, they tied him up and hung him. And that's across the hall from you. That's across the hall from me because where I was at, bro, it was a lot of Russian monsters. A Russian monster owned our team, so it was a lot of like gang stuff happening like that. Yeah, it was crazy, fam. And he was like a dude who would say, he didn't speak English, but he would say, you know, hello to us every day. Like, yeah. love. Like, y'all park here, park here. Like, you know. Yeah. yeah, they hung him, fam. And I had to try to save his life. Yo, you better than me, bro, because I would have probably froze, dog. Like, that's crazy, bro. Yeah, I just started acting. You know, you get getting them moments. And you don't know. Fam, but oh, I was dollar 911. Yeah, I was dollar 911, fam. I'm like. I don't know what's going on with my cell over here. <laughs> and then That's I figured crazy, out, like, man. in Latvia, That's it's 112. It's 112. That's how you call the police, 112. Like, I ain't even know that. Like, so now that's a valuable alert. Yeah, like, 
You know, I always tell people, you go overseas, man, you got to figure out how to call the emergency because that happened. I mean, one time I was with EK, bro, and we almost got stranded, ran out of gas, and, like, we was in Finland. Crazy snow. If we would have ran out of gas, it was no way we was going to be, like, able to get picked up. And we didn't know how to call 911 or nothing. How you figure it out? Nah, what happened was, like, thank God we had just happened to run into a gas Bro, it was not a gas station for, like, 70 kilometers, bro. And we just happened to run on one. The light was on. We was praying, like, God, please yeah, don't yeah. let us break down here. Because it's, it's the, slow. Yeah, it's middle of the night. It's nothing. We about to die out here. Like, we far from our city. You know, me and me, EK acting too dumb, driving two hours to Helsinki just to go party. And then driving back. Just, like, yeah, go kicking in Helsinki. Yeah. So let me, real quick, touch on that for me, man. I know that I was going to get to that anyway. Uh, for those who don't know, EK, like one of your best friends, and y'all played together uh, overseas, man. Touch on that experience a little bit for me. Oh, uh, man, that, that was amazing, man. Being able to play with one of my best friends was crazy. Like, that year, I think, any, than any other year, I grew more than anything, like, I read so many books that year. Remember, that was a year I, I watched yep. every Miles Monroe video. I watched every one because we actually played in, like, our Finland League. We played in the VTB, and then we played, like, uh, in a Euro League. So not Euro League, but, like, was it ULEB Cup or – I don't know if it was FIBA. But we played in multiple leagues, so we didn't do nothing but sit at home, like, when there was nothing to do. You know what Ooh. I'm saying? Like, And we didn't practice because we played in so many leagues. So – it was dope, man. I really got to, like, iron sharpens iron. We got a chance to talk. You know, I made him, like, a big believer in God because before this, he wasn't like that. He was just, you know, my boy. Mm -hmm. And it was love, man, like, having that experience. And then having somebody who can truly have your back. Like, if he played bad or I played bad, you know, we could, like, talk to each other. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. yeah like, each other. Right. And yeah. then, you know, if the money was funny for one of us, like, then, you know, it was like us versus the world. We never was like, you know, and it's not like that overseas. You know, when the money get funny, then everybody like, we on our own. Like, they, you, they your own. Like, you gotta talk, you gotta talk to the boss. Like, <laughs> right. I done got paid already. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, but it wasn't like that. So it was all love. And EK actually got me on the team. I remember. Because I came I from China and, yeah. you know, they had uh, Aubrey Coleman. He got me and Aubrey on the team. So it was like love. So Yeah, I remember that, man. That was that's one of the funniest years, though. So, yeah. look, I'm going to touch on this, and then we're going to skip gears a little bit. So, you, I don't know what to call it. You got God's favor for real. Remember when you first went out to China, and then you got on in the CBA, like, which is like, people don't understand. It's oh. like almost impossible if you didn't come from the yeah. game, not get that CBA, dog. <laughs> Tell a little bit of that story, how you got in the CBA, bro. You the man for that. Bro, forever, bro. let me tell you how I did this. Let me tell you how it happened. Ricky Davis, who was playing for the Timberwolves at the time, he had, like, retired, like, a year before that or, like, got cut and was, like, playing all over. Asked me, man, Pete, come rock out with me in China on this tour. It's going to be me, Iverson, and a couple other people. Fam. So I'm like, all right, cool. You know what I'm saying? Go over here. Uh, it was, like, 34 days or 35 days we play. So I asked EK. I said, look, I got a big dude who can come, too. He like, who, I'm going to pay y'all, you know, a few thousand. It was under 5,000, but just come and rock out. He was like, the opportunity, you know, for people to see. Bro, we get there. Ricky Iverson, Craig Davis, none of them came. None of them came, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but you know they do have them tours. You know they do come. We'll talk about that. Yeah, one. right. They come. None but of them came. This so, look, <laughs> Lee Dong, the dude I'm playing for, was beyond salty. So he said, he come, he come, we had to like, we get to the airport. He like, where's Ricky? Where's all these people? I'm like, I don't know. Like, I don't know Iverson and all of them. Like, Ricky brought right. me here. So, you know, none of them came. And who really like orchestrated a lot was this dude named Pete. He's, he's like Ricky Davis' cousin. Mm -hmm. Pete, Pete is the one who really orchestrates things. So they made Pete like coach, they made him in charge of all this stuff. So we get to the first game. They told my boy Pete, like, look, uh, y'all don't win this first game. Y'all all going home. We like, what? So Pete come to me like, Junior, let me talk to you. 
uh, if we don't win, we going home. So I'm like, damn, bro, I went stupid. Crazy. <laughs> Yeah. Let me tell you something. I went stupid. Basically, won the game by my like me and EK really by ourselves, bro. We had like a couple other good players with us, but after that first one, now Lee Dong was hyped. Like, all right, we going everywhere. Like, mm-hmm. tour still on. Mm-hmm. So then we we went, we played there, and then that's we played Shang Chi the first time. That's the team I ended up going to. But I had like thirty something. Mm-hmm. So then we started playing some other tour teams. We played a European team. We beat them. Then we went to the Chinese Rucker. Boy, we went dummy in that. Mm-hmm. We, me and EK went dummy. And it, for those of y'all who ain't, who don't, it's like the Rucker here has nothing on the Chinese Rucker. But it'd be 30,000 out there. It 30,000 people, and you playing at midnight. That's what they don't understand. 30,000 people. And the first game is at 10. Next game is at 12. Like, and it's Cracking, lit. <laughs> hey, and it's standing room only. There is uh, no chair. Crazy. It's all standing room. Crazy. So we playing there. Boy, I went crazy in the Rutgers. Bro, I hit eleven threes in one half. I was going stupid. <laughs> yeah, bro. I swear, this bro, is that. no lie. Everything that I shot that whole month went in. It was like I was. They start calling me the Samurai. That's how I got that nickname, the Samurai. I would hit a three yeah, yeah, and yeah. pull my sword out and cut people's head off and drag my sword. <laughs> yeah, I used to come out and like pull the swords out. Like it was a show, bro. I was like, and I went stupid, man. And then at the end of the tour, we had we playing all these CBA teams, and I was just going dummy every time, like 30, 40, 20. At the end of the tour, they was like, man, Shang-Chi want to sign you. I'm like, dang. They said they got a new owner, and uh, they got Von Wafer, Jeremy Tyler. They want you, too. I'm like, cool. You know what I'm saying? All right, what's up with the bread? They like, all right, here's the bread. Bro, I was making more money eight bands a week. So this one, I was like, dang, we getting paid weekly eight bands a week. Plus a thousand dollar win bonus yeah. on every game. Understand, it's thirty eight games in the CBA. Yeah. <laughs> Plus six first class tickets. Them much like eight thousand, nine thousand. I only used a couple of them, so I got to get all the bread from that. <laughs> Boy, when That's I see that contract, like what? Then we stand in the Kimiski Hotel, like five star hotel, big plush. They doing your laundry every day. They do my laundry and they put it in plastic bags and fold it up like it's new clothes or something. <laughs> <laughs> right, bro. Big I was living so lavish, man. I couldn't believe it. And then when I got to practice, they was like, "Yeah, the Americans they don't do nothing." Cause I'm in there practicing hard, like, "Oh, y'all doing sprints? Let me hop in here and do the sprints." One day. You know, dude brought yeah. me over. He said, look, I, I can tell you ain't been in this league before. Americans don't do nothing. They, <laughs> they're not practicing with the team. They don't go <laughs> eat with the team. They don't do nothing. I'm like, dang, okay. <laughs> then I, I, I kind of learned my lesson. But that's what made them people love me, though. Bro, I would go to the training mm-hmm. hall with them. they like, you the first American to ever come eat at the training hall. Like, mm-hmm. But China was crazy. I got on like that. That's you know, thing. just favor, man. Yeah. Yep, for sure. Now, that's a lit story, man. So, yeah. look, I got to touch on this, man. So, you you big in the culture, man, with the AAU and the uh, – you big with AAU, your daughter's team and all that, man. I commend that. And tell me about – tell me about that and tell me about your dad, man. You know how to bring your dad up. I know he was your oh. coach, man. How, how, much, how, much, how much of the influence of your dad is in, in you in terms of coaching? You know, my dad was crazy. So my dad used to really snap on me. My dad grew up in Detroit, bro, yeah. in the street. So he ain't had nothing. He don't got family. You know, he 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 barely graduated high school. He said, look, all I had was basketball. So that's what his, like, he said, like, my thing I'm going to teach y'all is basketball. Like, I was telling you, we come home from tournaments, no lights, because my dad don't spend all the money to go out of town. To a tournament. <laughs> to a tournament. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He'll spend the bill money. Like, he don't care. But... Yeah, fam. I remember. I remember a time. You know, when you the coach, son, you cannot do this. They threw the ball into me. We going this way. Bro. Swear to God, but I swear to God, 
I just caught it and looked at the basket quickly. The wrong one, though. Their basket. You know what I'm saying? We going this way. I squared up this way. Yeah. Bro, my dad called timeout and went stupid on me. <laughs> I was fifth grade, fam. I called no, that listen. ball. <laughs> no, listen. You told me this story about your dad, man. If you got any of your dad and you and that coach, or that coach is right. trying to feel for your daughter and them girls. No, I'm, I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit calmer now, man. I yell at my girls, but really, like, I'm on them, and I've been coaching them now for a couple years. Yeah. But I, I'm tough on them. I'm tough on them. I expect them to have basketball IQ. That's what that's what I try right. to teach my girls basketball right. IQ. And my biggest thing why I coach is like because I use basketball as a vehicle to like achieve my life dreams, to right. travel the world, to get an education. So I want them to be able to teach them to use that same vehicle. You know, basketball for me bridges a lot of social gaps. I went Absolutely. to a school. We had maybe three white people in our whole school out of twenty two thousand people. Three white people. Mm. But wait, we ain't seen no white people where I grew up. It's all black people. But when you playing AAU and you traveling, you dealing with all kind of people. So basketball was that what allowed me to have personality and then get into an environment where it's mostly other races, other people with social economical classes, and I still be comfortable with myself. You know what I'm saying? Still be who you are. Yeah, and so I wanted to, I wanted to be able to pass that forward. Like I always say, each one teach one. So now I just exactly. gotta pass it on to you know the next generation, you know, be able to share that same thing. I owe it to the game. Let me. I gotta. I, I gotta. I gotta. <laughs> I gotta remind you of one story because that's beautiful. But I gotta get back on the maniac side. <laughs> tell me your pops put you in the game. <laughs> you tell me he put you in the game. Bro, my dad was bogus. <laughs> He, he said was it was. Focused, you bro. said it was three free throws. I never heard this in my life. I gotta share this. He said he put you in the game. I'm gonna show you exactly what I did, bro. Row. Boom. You said, <laughs> you said you was you was ready. You tucked your shirt in. You ready? Boom, boom, boom. Geek. First free throw. Man, I'm geek. I, I hit him with like, this. Yeah, you I hit him with this. Get loose. You ready? Yeah. Match up. Who you got? I'm here. You there? You know what I'm saying? Cool. <laughs> Next so, free throw. Second free throw go in. What you hit? What's up? And uh, PJ, I'm like, no, you said, oh, 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 you said you didn't even look like man. I just got in. Yeah, I, I just got in. I know it ain't. PJ, huh? They tapped no, me on shoulder. You didn't get a out, possession, bro. bro. You didn't get a possession. They tapped me on the shoulder. Like, yeah, you out. You know, and then you so confused and salty. So I come to the bench, <laughs> looking at the other players, like, what I do. <laughs> And my dad, bogus as hell, got the nerve to go and put his hand on somebody. Yeah, yeah, good job. Sit down. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, I was so salty. That's when I knew my dad. He don't care about nothing but winning. Bro. He wouldn't even play his own son, bro. This is sixth grade national. Bro, I never heard of that. <laughs> what did he, how did he, he, he explain that, that first though? Like, what, what, is, what is the reason behind that? Nah, my dad was like, I just need some time to think. That's why he put me out there. <laughs> you said you walked. You said y'all was in North Carolina. And you just started walking. You didn't even know where you were I didn't even go to the after game meeting. I just dipped. They was looking for me for like three hours, bro. I don't even care. I was yeah. so mad. My, that's when I knew my dad was bogus, boy. My dad is so crazy. He don't care about nothing but winning. Bro, I'm your Duh. son. This is the reason why you doing this team. You going to put me in the first free throw, take me out of the second free throw. And then got the nerve to shake my hand like, good job. Bro, I didn't even do nothing. There's nothing that can top that. There's nothing <laughs> basketball that can top that, dog. Right. <laughs> oh, right. my goodness, bro. That's amazing. Yeah. That's, that's, that's what, Paul Senior. Let me you, shift boy. gears, man. Let me shift gears, man. You was here, uh, what, last week? Man, you got to, yep. to see uh, the, the team, what they call it, Team 121? Yep. Would you tell me your take on them, man? I uh I got a chance. We play a lot of them played in the kingdom, man, and um I got a chance to you know play with them, play against, and play with most of them. Um, I think they're truly talented, man. Really talented. What you yeah, think? Yeah, they're young though. They're young. Yeah. They're young, but they're good though. And sure. I think you know big testament to like Coach Chris and you know the staff because they got them playing hard, man. That's sure. And and they they win truly team effort, like. They ain't got one player going stupid or one player who can go out there and go dumb. Even Big Caleb, he's raw, but he ain't like big standout, standout. You know but what he, can easily, he can easily, he can be like, that. Look, man, 
I'm preseason this, this, man. I need, I need. Give me that ball, bro. I need 15 yeah. shots. Like, but he's come, not on that. Man, he chilling. Yeah. He playing the right way. Playing the right way. Yeah, and man, I think, you know, crazy. one thing that he learned, he he went to try to get drafted, and then he seemed like, it's real. Like, if I'm going to get drafted, I got to be in shape. I gotta like if I get to the NBA, I ain't gonna be camping on no. I ain't gonna be camping in the post. I gotta be able to shoot that, you know, that that nineteen footer. I gotta be able to pick I'm pop. I gotta be able to guard somebody who can who's mobile. Same side off that me. screen. I gotta be able to guard that guard. Yeah, so maybe I need to come back one more time and reevaluate myself. And what he did, he came back and didn't take it as a negative. It's like I tested the waters, positive re positive criticism, things I need to get better at. And now he implement them, and that's why they about to be tight top ten after a couple more nah, games. They tough, bro. They tough. Yeah, bro. they already top ten. They tough, man. They. Oh yeah. So all right. They got a good. They got a good balance, man. I like them. Let me. What about the league, man? I got a few league questions for you, man. What about? Yeah, uh, go ahead. First of all, who's your goat, man? Who? Who I right now? No, who's your goat? The period. In the NBA. Current players or anytime? Man, everybody, man. If it's of course MJ, I ain't I ain't taking nobody right. over MJ. Right. But yeah, you know, yeah, some people be acting weird. But this is I my only reason. Sure. But I love Brian, but he I ain't got Brian. that killer. I'm, he ain't got that killer with, mentality, bro. That. Yeah, he's he don't got that killer. Cause let me just tell you, I got a lot of love for Brian. Got the hoop with him a lot, man. He actually all around go impact everything he is. But on that court, yeah. that first game when they talk about Kawhi, this Kawhi that. I'm telling you, Jordan would have went out there and shot 50 times. Jordan would have shot 50 Bro. times. Man. Either I'm going to be the hero or the villain. Ball There's no in between. Yeah. <laughs> yes. LeBron no, said it's cool. It's a marathon. Cool. Yeah, like, yeah, I'm cool with marathon. I mean, that's good. It's, it's know, just man. the thing about Brian, Brian versus Jordan, I, I go with Jordan. And Brian, my favorite, for a lot of reasons. I'm biased. He's from where I've been around. Yeah, him. me too. But, me too. Um, yeah, but like, <laughs> it's just a different way of winning. It's just a different yeah, way Yeah, that's of it. And that's I, it. He I, more like, yeah. I, it and for me, like, I can relate more to Mike. Like, nah, bro, I'm about to rip your head off, bro. I'm you going know what stupid. I'm and when I Brian get here, I'm never like, going to lose. Yeah. Exactly. And Brian more of like, an, like he like a sniper. He going to sit on the roof and pick you apart. Brian, I mean, Jordan going to come out there with a with a K and just let everybody get it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, like, <laughs> ridiculous. Different. Yeah. yeah, he yeah. is. But he well, cut from another cloth. Five. If the give NBA – top, top five. Ooh. Jordan, of course, Bronny. Kobe got to be in there for me. Magic. And probably Shaq. Ooh. I'm going to tell you something. Nah, I ain't going to say it on here. I'll tell you all. Nah, I'll tell you all. Yeah. I'm going to tell you all. <laughs> yeah. No, I'll tell you now. I like – I came up in that era where Shaq and Kobe was beefing. I took sides with, with Shaq. And, and Kobe, I'm not denying his greatness. Kobe, not top for five, sure. top ten, wherever you want to put him. But I just, I, I seen what Shaq did that first go. To me, I say this. Shaq's first go round, like that 